Hello and Namaste friends. Today I am going to discuss about meniscus function and surgical decision making in meniscus injury. Uh, the decision making in uh, meniscus injury dates back to early 1800 and uh, this paper by John Sutton, the ligaments, their nature and morphology is very important in decision making at that time. Uh, what he considered was, he considered meniscus of vestigial remnant of late muscle. This was um, the foundation behind the thinking towards the meniscus at that time. Smiley in 1967, what he told about meniscus was, if it is torn, take it out, take it all out. Even if you just think it's torn, take it out. So people, surgeons used to be very, very aggressive towards meniscus at that time. And meniscus used to be considered a vestigial thing. And it used to be considered a thing that will create just a problem. So whenever there used to be problem detected in the meniscus, they used to be excised, not to be not uh, not repaired or not preserved. So accordingly, Smiley developed so many instruments uh, for meniscectomy. These are various menis meniscotomes, popularly known as Smiley meniscotomes. But now, as we know, trend is towards saving meniscus many techniques many instruments has been developed to save the meniscus this today we repair the meniscus whenever they are repairable when there are no meniscus we transplant from the allograft and whenever allograft is not possible or um, if allograft is not possible or if allograft is not feasible what we do is we even uh, replace the meniscus with the meniscal scaffold so this change in paradigm, the paradigm shift from complete excision of meniscus to meniscus repair has come because of this biomechanical study in which they showed that if there is total meniscectomy of the medial side, the contact area is decreased by 50 to 70 percent and contact stress increases by 100 percent. Accordingly, when there is lateral meniscectomy, the contact area decreases by 40 to 50 percent and contact stress increases by 200 to 300. This particular, this particular biomechanical study was very impactful in making this uh, paradigm shift in uh, treatment of meniscus. So let us discuss something about function of meniscus. This meniscus increases the joint congruency. As we know, uh, the upper bone, the femur is circular one and lower part is relatively flatter one. So uh, concave meniscus leads to in, uh, increase in joint congruency. This meniscus also improves the stability more in the medial side. The joint lubrication is also provided by the meniscus. Joint nutrition is also provided by it. And they also give some proprioceptive feedback. But whatever is said, the most important function of meniscus is the sub -absor shock absorber property. The all of the weight that comes from above is absorbed by it and the remaining part, the remaining force is transferred downwards. So this meniscus, the function of meniscus can be also be understood with the help of uh, uh, this example. We we, we get so many fragile things from very far away at our doorsteps without any break in them. Even the fragile glasses we receive at our home, at our doorstep without any uh, breakage. So that is because these fragile instruments are wrapped around with the shock absorbers. Similarly, this fragile knee is protected by the shock absorber called the meniscus. So this can be better explained with this animation video. Whenever the force comes from upwards to downwards, from femur to tibia, transfers from femur to tibia, what happens is the real shock absorbing property of meniscus comes into play and uh, the force is absorbed with this both meniscus and very minimal force is transferred downwards to the tibia. But when there is meniscal injury, what happens is same force when is it is transferred from femur to tibia. The normal side meniscus absorbs it, but abnormal side uh, it, it is not absorbed. And because of which the whole of the force is transferred to that particular compartment. And gradually because of this, the, uh, the articular cartilage injury sets in and gradually the degenerative changes and osteoarthritis sets in and it also leads to the deformity. So let us know something about diagnosis of meniscus here. There are many 
tests that are available for diagnosis of meniscal tear, joint line tenderness, McMurray test, applied grinding test, Thessaly test, but no, none of these tests according to literature are very, very sensitive, uh, very, very specific. They may be sensitive enough. And there are various studies, systemic review, even systemic review and meta-analysis that shows the diagnostic accuracy of MRI uh, for ACL and for meniscus tears. Even the, some have compared, some has compared the um, efficacy or diagnostic accuracy of MRI with arthroscopy. But what most of these literature concludes is for uh, meniscal injury even the clinical examination MRI not so much um, sensitive and specific and final diagnosis is always made during arthroscopy so to decide when we, we, we find that uh, meniscus has been injured so but decision making always is uh, always is choice between the two whether to repair or excise to repair or excise decision making depends upon various things like location of tear, age of the patient, meniscus tear pattern, the arthritic status of the knee, time duration of injury, the alignment status of the lower limb, and associated concomitant procedures that we do during this meniscal procedure. This is very famous picture uh, in knee surgeries. This is the study of Karnowski in which he, did, he found out that the peripheral part of the meniscus is very vascular one and more we go towards the center, the vascularity decreases. So accordingly, he divided the meniscal zone into red red zone, red white zone and white white zone. And according to him, uh, the red red zone and red white zone are repairable, better to repair and white white zone are better to excise. Is of the patient is also very important uh, deciding factor for uh, deciding whether to repair or excise or younger the is uh, the better is the result with repair meniscal tear patterns simple tear patterns like vertical tear patterns are very very good to repair the radial tear pattern and complex tear pattern are not so good tears to repair so the the time duration of meniscus injury is very important factor that leads to uh, that that is significant impact on decision making this can be compared with this uh, very day-to-day uh, -day example if we uh, for example the sort is torn and if we do stitch in time that is if we do few stitches in time we can completely save this sort but if we just ignore it and continue using this sort what happens it it, 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 it will be torn on multiple sides and whole of this sort will be destroyed. So there is popular saying stitch in time saves nine. So the duration of injury is very very important. This is a factor for decision making during the meniscal procedure. Prediction of repair. There are multiple uh, predictive measures, predictive scoring system that has been discussed in literature. The last qualifiers that is described in Campbell orthopedics is very useful one it describes location is size tissue and other qualifiers as we have just discussed and also there is ortho one prom scoring system where the plane x-ray uh, is also taken into consideration but whatever is uh, what whatever is the predictive what is whatever is the value of this predictive scoring system the final decision score final decision is always made during the arthroscopy and uh, after carefully palpating carefully probing the meniscal tear then only the decision of repairing or excising to that particular meniscus is done and one very important uh, thing uh, to consider during uh, decision making of meniscus repair or excision in our pop population is economic health of the patient. We know there are many devices, many instruments that are used for meniscal preservation and th those are very expensive ones. So sometimes what happens is uh, while using these types of instrument to, to you to repair a good size meniscal tear, longitudinal meniscal tear, it may be sometimes more expensive than the total knee arthroplasty so the besides all those things uh, mentioned in those predictive scoring system the economic health of the patient is also very very important in our particular setting so because of this uh, we you know, we we could not save many meniscus which could have been saved 
and we we thought as as there is a saying that necessity is the mother of invention so this uh, ignited us uh, forced us to uh, develop this part this particular technique this technique is published in arthroscopy technique and video uh, video demonstration is also available in the website so um, meniscal repair is just like a non union treatment we need adequate exposure if you do not have adequate exposure you can do pie crusting in various positioning maneuver to increase the exposure we have to freshen the margin just like in uh, non union surgery to freshen the margin we can use simple low suction uh, low suction uh, saving low suction saver and sometimes with the use of uh, diamond rasp and various various trephination technique we can use the fastening of margin a position and good contact is very very important for this we have to use good quality good strength suture like orthocord preserve and increase vascularity is very very important to increase vascularity trephination can be done and stable fixation and compression is also important the smc knot along with the orthocord is good for it and augmentation of healing with the graft means uh, just like in non union surgery we use bone graft here we can use the fibrin clot augmentation or sometimes with additional procedure like acl surgery or pcl surgery the same fibrin clot prp is uh, will be there uh, to enhance the repair so take home message meniscus is very very important structure for knee health meniscus repairability is an intraoperative decision always is a patient tear type duration of tear location of tear are the main things to consider for decision making outside in meniscus repair is more economical and practical in our setting so whatever things are said and done one thing we have to keep in mind is uh, save the meniscus should be our motto thank you so much